Well, I, I, I guess I can't really say welcome to the Frankie Thorpe show because you've been listening already uh, uh, for the whole night, and I appreciate the people tuning in and whatnot. Uh, and as promised, I was finally able to get uh, a chance to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with the guy who I'm interviewing right now. Uh, you might know him from uh, Halloween 2 as Michael Myers, or you might know him from uh, other uh, stunts or, or other films that he's done, uh, or as a famous, world famous uh, Hollywood stunt devil, none other than the living legend, Dick Warlock. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie, a living legend. Well, I don't look at myself like a living legend, I'll tell you that. Uh, in fact, at my age, I'm just barely living. <laughs> We all, we all get a little older through, through time, but uh, I mean, I'm sure uh, you're, you'll be in the uh, Hollywood uh, Hall of Fame here sometime soon. Or maybe you are already involved with that. I'm not really sure. I, hadn't, I didn't, don't even know about a Hollywood Hall of Fame that would incorporate stunt guys into it. I know there's one uh, in one of the Midwest states. I don't know whether it's Montana or Wyoming or somewhere in there yeah. that. Uh, a fellow named John Carpenter, and, and not in any relation to the director of John Carpenter, yeah. but uh, he has a, a stuntman's hall of fame, if that's what you're referring to. Okay, yeah, maybe something like that. I, I was not aware that they had a Hollywood stuntman hall of fame. I just, I just figure, you know, people uh, eventually get to a hall of fame of something of what they've been good at. So. Uh, no, I, as far as I know, there's no Hollywood uh, Hall of Fame, you know, in Hollywood itself. And in fact, the uh, the stunt community recently campaigned with the Screen Actors Guild, or not just the Screen Actors Guild, it's the, the Motion Picture Academy, about having uh, Academy Awards for stunt people. Okay. And uh, they they turned them down. And they says no. Nope. Uh, we, we, you know, we give it to hairdressers and stuff like that, but we don't want to give it to uh, to stunt guys. So I don't know. I mean, we probably never will. Uh, are you uh, like if, if someone were to go to like the Hollywood, California, and uh, see you, would you would they be able to see your steps or footprints on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at all? Or? Uh, no, <laughs> you know, there's, it's a, that's a funny deal. You have to be sponsored for that. You have to pay three thousand dollars, and then the uh, the Chamber of Commerce for the City of Hollywood votes on whether or not to accept you for a for a star. Okay. Uh, and I don't know of any stuntmen who have a star there. Uh, not even Yakima Kanat, who's the granddaddy of uh, all the stunt guys. You know, I don't know. You know, at the age. Uh, uh, a demographic is for your station there. Okay. But, uh, uh, for for those of you guys out there that, that don't know, Yakima Canut is a uh, a stunt guy who started out with John Wayne years and years ago and kind of paved the way for the stunt community. Okay. And, uh, he's the only one I know of that's ever received an Academy Award, and that was for a lifetime achievement. Well, then maybe that's something that you might be able to get one day. <laughs> who knows? It's hard to say. I doubt that. that. I'll tell you my, what, how I feel about myself as a stunt person. Okay. Uh, there are there are stars in the acting world, and then there are supporting players. And I've always considered myself a supporting player. I've never been a star stunt guy like, like a Hal Needham or a Dar Robinson, uh, although my body of work is probably as big or bigger than theirs. But I've never considered myself as a star stunt guy, just a, a supporting player. Okay, and, that, and that's it. Kind of sums it up, kind of right there. And uh, uh, now, uh, going with that, uh, uh, what kind of got you into acting or stunt doubling in the first place? Well, actually, <clears throat> uh, I've always wanted to be in the business, and I wanted primarily to be in the stunt community. But uh, I also had a longing to be an actor. But that never panned out because once I got the opportunity to act, I found out I couldn't. <laughs> I developed stage fright. Okay. Uh, when I was about 17, a guy forced me to get up on a stage and sing, and I got out of meter with a, with the band, and I'd never sung with a band before, never even rehearsed with these guys, and it gave me a terrible case of stage fright. So I'm better off doing stunts where I don't have to talk too much, or like Michael Myers. He never says a word, just kind of pops around and, you know, does people in. <laughs> and kills people as well. <laughs> well, you don't do that. You don't kill people. Uh, <laughs> like the character, of course. But, uh, uh, okay, and uh, you told me earlier uh, before we uh, recorded this interview that you've been uh, a stunt double for about 43 years about, huh? Yeah, about 43 years. I started in 1960, and uh, uh, my last film... 
I think it was 2003. I think it was Spider-Man was the last movie that I worked on. And what were what was your role in that at the stunt double? Well, <coughs> on uh, if if anyone has seen the movie, remembers the balcony scene where they had all these gray-headed guys, and, you know, the chief of police and the chief of fire, and all these politicians. They were all on this balcony, and the Green Goblin comes in and throws a bomb. Uh, you know, blowing up that part yeah. of the building and, the, and a piece of the uh, balcony fell or, or, or slanted down and the actor slid down to the edge and here comes uh, Spider-Man and saves the day. Well, I was one of those red-headed guys that was up on the balcony. Uh, it wasn't a big deal, but it was a gift to me. Uh, it was a week's work. And uh, like I say, it was my last movie and, and I'm proud of it. Oh uh, yeah, and now that it, it all come back to me, uh, I, I do have to know the first fight of that movie on DVD, and uh, yeah, I remember that scene. So you were involved with that. That was your very last film. Mm-hmm. Great. And uh, are there any other uh, future projects coming up, or that you might be wanting to do, or is that kind of your is that kind of your last hurrah for that? You know what I'd like to do. I think it'd be fun uh, is to do some kind of a cameo in the next Halloween movie. You know, as a storekeeper that Michael Myers steals the next mask from, or uh, something, <laughs> just just for just for a kick. But I don't think it'll it'll ever happen. I I don't know a thing about Rob Zombie, who I understand is going to direct the next one. Uh, I think Brad Marie is a great guy, and I thought he did a great job as Michael in the in the one that he did. Uh, I, as far as I know, he's supposed to reprieve the role and do it again. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, they get a little flaky down there with the with the company that's doing these things. So I don't know what will ever happen. I I don't know if Rob Zombie's ever even heard my name. So uh, maybe, way, I'd love to do a little part in that one. Okay, uh, maybe uh, uh, Rob Zombie, of course. You know, if if you say you're not familiar, he's a he's a musician, of course, and uh, more of a kind of like a Alice Cooper kind of type of deal, kind of, you know, with music, uh, kind of like Gap or whatever, and his music kind of, kind of what like Marilyn Manson does, and that, that's what he kind of, if you've ever seen uh, the House of the Thousand Corpses, uh, that was one of his first movies he ever uh, made or whatnot. Uh, was that with Sid Uh I believe so. That's the guy who played with the clown or whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be, okay. that'd be right. So, if you have any idea, yeah, it's kind of, kind of where, uh, how that kind of uh, got started or whatnot. Yeah. That was his first film he ever directed. So, all right. I, I personally have not seen the whole thing. I just, you know, kind of give you a little upset what who he is or whatnot. But uh, okay, uh, now to you, uh, uh, what are your memories? Now we're gonna go way back, way back to when you first started, way even before Michael Myers, way before Halloween two, way even before Flash. You know, why that? Because I knew you did it. You were in that film as well, Chevy Chase. Uh, uh, a couple of the Fletch films. Yeah, Fletch 1 and Fletch Lives, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were your memories from your very first film? The very, the very first film? The very first one you ever did. Okay, it was a, it was a picture called Ballad of a Gunfighter with Marty Robbins, the country western singer who did the song El Paso. Yep. And i got to tell you, being on the set with this gentleman, and I say gentleman because he truly was, was a real treat. Almost every lunch with that, that he was on the set, he would, during what was supposed to be his lunch period, you know, he would sit around with his guitar and entertain us with all of his, his multitude of songs that he, he did. And, and just, a, I don't know, he's just a, a great guy. And, and of course, my very first movie, uh, my doctor, in fact, had to front me the money. It was well. Not my doctor was a pediatrician and there were two of my kids. They had to front me the money to get into the Screen Actors Guild because I didn't have the money. <laughs> you know, and then and it's just you know going to the premiere at uh, the Cornell Theater in Burbank, California, and uh, having my friends and family there. Uh, the whole thing was, I mean, it was like a surreal. Uh, they didn't use that expression back then, but it was. Now that I think back on it. Uh, I, I, I couldn't think of a, of a happier time in my life as to have a dream come true. I mean, when you start out about nine or ten years old wanting to be in the movie business and then it finally comes true ten years later, uh, that's quite a trip, you know? Sure. And uh, with, with that, 